Welcome back to another Tabletop Review. Today we'll look at the Smith & Wesson Model 10-5-38 Special Revolver. The Smith & Wesson Military and Police Revolver, or Model 10 as it was later called, is a combat firearm that has served through two world wars and was still in use during Desert Storm. It has been carried mostly by pilots and security forces. It's been called the most popular revolver in the 20th century. The 4-inch barrel Model 10 is the most common, but there are 2-inch snubbies, as they're called, and of course, 5-inch models like this one, and even 6-inch versions. Most of what you'll find today also have thick bowl barrels, as opposed to this older tapered barrel. I bought this one used some years ago. As you can see, it's in really good condition. It had a fair price on it. Many of these old guns were carried a lot, but actually not fired all that much so sometimes they'll look more worn than they really are. This one doesn't look like it's even been handled very much. No major scratches or marks. It's really very nice. Let's make sure this one's cleared. Founded in 1852 by Horace Smith and Daniel B. Wesson, the Smith & Wesson Company was originally located in Norwich, Connecticut. The history behind the Smith & Wesson Model 10, or Military and Police Revolver, begins in 1899 when the United States Army and Navy placed orders with Smith & Wesson for a few thousand Model 1899 hand ejector revolvers chambered for the 38 Long Colt U.S. Service cartridge. With this order, the hand ejector model became known as the 38 Military and Police Model. That same year, Smith & Wesson began offering the Military and Police in a new 38 Smith & Wesson Special cartridge, or that is, the 38 Special. In 1957, Smith & Wesson converted to numerical designations for the revolvers, and the 38 Military and Police became the Model 10. In 1959, when Smith & Wesson introduced the heavy barrel, the model was designated the 10-1. Each engineering revision has received the number and sequence until the day we have the 10-14. So, since this is a Model 10-5, we know it was produced between 1962 and 1977. Since the manual and, uh, and the uh, parts order that came with this gun are dated uh, in the late 1960s, it's likely to have been produced around that time or, or later. Of course, there are other identifiers as well. In the late 1960s, Smith & Wesson no longer offered the tapered barrel. Model 10-5 series were only available with straight bull barrels. If I really wanted to know more exactly, I could contact Smith & Wesson, of course, and they would actually tell me based on the gun serial number. The Military and Police, now in the Model 10, is a double-action six-shot revolver. Over its long production run, it's been available with barrel lengths of 2-inch, 3-inch, 4-inch, 5-inch, and 6-inch. One more point about these later Model 10 revolvers, they're pretty robust. Uh, there's a question I've heard regarding what type of 38 ammo you can fire in these guns. As it turns out, the Smith & Wesson J or K frame revolvers, uh, the Model 10 is a K frame revolver, uh, anything made after 1933 has been shown to be able to handle factory plus P rounds just fine. So if you're wondering, you should check it out for yourself. Now, you might also recall I said earlier that this revolver was the most popular of the 20th century. That's because Smith & Wesson produced uh, about 6 million of this type of gun over those years. That made them very common. Uh, so, years ago, there seemed to be a lot of these used ones available, and they were reasonably priced. As I said earlier, I bought this one used, but it did come with the original box, which had still had the uh, packing paper for the gun, and it had the the manual and the parts list for the gun, which I thought was pretty cool. This Smith & Wesson Model 10-5 has the 5-inch tapered barrel. The muzzle is crowned. The barrel is threaded into place and pinned. As you can see here, the Smith & Wesson revolvers produced after 1981 are not pinned. It fires 38 special rounds, but it can also fire the plus P rounds. It's a Smith & Wesson K-frame revolver. Smith & Wesson lettering for their frames has to do with their size. The K-frame is a medium size specifically designed for 38 Special cartridge. The N-frame on this Smith & Wesson Model 29 44 Magnum is obviously larger. 
and this J frame snub nose is smaller and now I have actually a 1903 32 caliber revolver which is smaller yet and this is the I frame. The finish is blued and the grips are walnut. This model was available in nickel finish as well and there's also the similar Smith & Wesson K frame stainless steel model 66. The sights are fixed there's a sighting groove here over the cylinder area. It's got an eighth inch ramped front sight and that's indicative of the model 10-5 when the half moon sights of the earlier models were replaced. It's a double action, single action trigger. The double action trigger pull is long and heavy at about 12 pounds. Single action is very, very light. Uh, it feels like less than three pounds. As I understand it, double action is the expected primary mode of firing. Single action is available when controlled higher accuracy is required. But I find double action pull a little bit long and hard for any reasonable consistency of, of accuracy here with this gun. However, in single action mode, this gun is very accurate. The cylinder release is here. And the ejector is here. Speed loaders are available for this gun which allow for fairly rapid reloading. The design is simple as is its operation. The hammer and the trigger are heat treated. By the way, Smith & Wesson cylinders have been heat treated since 1919. Looking at the hammer, you can see that it's, the firing pin is pinned into the hammer using a rolling pin. What you can't see is that there is a rebounding hammer with an internal hammer block that prevents the firing pin from hitting the cartridge until the trigger is pulled back. That means this gun is safe to carry with the cylinders fully loaded. The main or hammer spring is a leaf spring inside the grip frame. The overall length is 9 and 7 8 inches. Unloaded weight is 31.55 ounces or almost 2 pounds. As for cons, I'm not going to get into a discussion of revolvers versus automatics here, nor am I going to go down the path of the 38 Special and 38 Special Plus P loads versus 357. The Smith & Wesson Model 10.5 is a basic revolver has stood the test of time better than most. The question is, given that this 38 revolver is more than 50 years old, and from a time when revolvers were king and the Smith & Wesson Model 10 was at the top of the pile, how does this gun in perspective seem to me? Well, the biggest con of the Model 10.5 revolver, in my opinion, is the same one I've had for all Smith & Wesson revolvers. As smooth as these guns are finished, why do the controls always have sharp edges? And look at this checkering on this hammer. What the heck is this highly abrasive service all about? Is that really necessary? The second con I have is one I've heard from others regarding Smith & Wesson's two-piece walnut grips, which I'm told are technically to be called their stock rather than their grips. Well, whatever. They just don't seem to match the hand-fitted quality of the rest of the gun. Uh, it, it's not that they are, you know, bad. They just, they look a little cheap in my opinion. They're just not very comfortable. Even the texture seems coarse. I'm not saying they're horrible, I just think Smith & Wesson could have done a better design and finish on them. Now fortunately, there are a lot of aftermarket options out there for Smith & Wesson K-frame revolvers. One more point, since they made a lot of these, if you're looking at picking up one of these Model 510s, you should know that the Smith & Wesson made some poorly machined and fitted revolvers. That would be especially true of revolvers produced during the 1970s and the 1980s. So check the gun over carefully. Make sure the gun is straight, tight fitted, and uniform in this construction. As for pros, notwithstanding my last comment about the 1970s and 80 productions of the Smith & Wessons, one of the things about Smith & Wesson revolvers, which I actually like over other makes, is how well they are built. Just look at this gun. These were hand fitted and usually very well made. This gun is more than 50 years old and still very tight. It's been uniformly machined. Everything functions so smoothly. The action is extremely smooth. 
just look at how tight this side plate is fitted here. You can hardly see the, the, uh, uh, the difference between the plate and the frame. These were beautifully crafted firearms built to last generations. And it was built to handle the 38 Special cartridge, but it can also handle the 38 Special Plus P hollow point. That makes this revolver a good choice for personal and home defense. It's simple, straightforward to operate, it's safe, and it's reliable. When you fire one of these, the muzzle jump is minimal due to the cartridge, the long barrel, and the gun's weight. This particular revolver hasn't been fired all that much given its condition, even though it's, it's got some age on it. It's probably sat in a drawer or in the original box in a safe most of its life. No signs of wear of being handled or holstered. It's like a new gun. Absolutely amazing. This is actually fairly typical for a lot of these revolvers, and it's why many of these revolvers usually hold their value. These Model 10s do have a classic appeal, and Smith & Wesson reintroduced the Model 10 in 2012 after it was discontinued in 2010, which I think says something about its popularity. If you like the classic look and you're searching for a good, reasonably powered wheel gun, the Smith & Wesson Model 10 is hard to beat. One of the advantages of revolvers is how easy they are to disassemble for cleaning. Basically, that's it. You might also be wondering about removing the cylinder from the frame. You'll need to do this if the cylinder isn't spinning freely. To do so, you remove this screw here. This is actually referred to as screw number one of three frame screws. This is screw one, two, and three you can't see here. But this screw right here is the one that's removed in order to pull the yoke, that's this unit right here, from the frame. Uh, once that screw is removed, this pulls off this way, and then the cylinder uh, comes off of the, uh, slides off of the shaft of the yoke. I can tell that this gun's been probably disassembled by an amateur simply because of the fine scratches around the first screw. They're, they're just, you can barely see them here. Uh, a professional would have carefully aligned and guarded the tip of the uh, screwdriver. The other thing I see is just a slight distortion on the, on the slot of the screw head. Uh, a professional would have used a properly sized tool. Still, it's not too bad. I've seen much worse. The manufacturer suggested retail price for, the, for a new Model 10 is currently $753. Used Model 10 5s are probably out there for between $400 and $500. I did see one last year for about $275, but it looked a bit worn. Well, to wrap up, if you watch movies and TV shows from the 60s through the 90s, you'll commonly see these Model 10s carried by police and security personnel. They are the iconic movie gun. I always thought the 5 and 6 inch barrel revolvers looked a little awkward to draw from a service holster, but these were the popular sidearm of the day. The Model 10.5 is solid, smooth, and reliable. It requires minimum maintenance. It is ruggedly constructed, beautifully finished, and assembled. It's safe to carry and simple to operate. It's effective, it's accurate enough, and it's soft to shoot. It's definitely an heirloom firearm. It will make a great basic home defense gun. I think you'll find that what is often said about the Smith & Wesson 10.5 is true. That it's everything you need in a handgun and nothing you don't. Any weapon you carry is better than one you left at home. Thanks for watching. Hope you'll be back for my next tabletop review. Until next time, stay safe.